get on here real quick and say that like um if something happened to me if just real blunt and honest with if i end up dead if i end up missing or something like that just know somebody did it and i just want to get out here and put something out because i know how the media i know how my job um, being in the military will paint these false narratives and I'm going to do more talking about it I'm trying to post a video now, but I just need something quick um, Put out there so that way people know like if it was self-inflicted or something like that My family will know my friends will know so if if nothing come from them or nothing like that I just want to say somebody did it. I don't know what's going to happen But for some reason I feel like my days for some something is just telling me my days are limited and I don't know how it could be You know, I don't know if it's, you know, things get heavy, man. And I'm not gonna lie, like things are perfect for me. Like it could be, and this is not me trying to come on here and tell y'all that I'm gonna be dead the next day. I don't know. I don't know, but I know those people who do end up dead. They wish they would have put something out. They wish they could have told their truth before, you know, they left this earth and left it to people. And now, like I said, I'm trying to make a video um, of everything. Just saying what's kind of going on then they can paint whatever picture they want and people don't know my side of the story so i want to make a video but just keep me in y'all prayers um and just know that don't <sighs> mm -hmm. i told y'all it was only a matter of time they put out a wall they just seen me less than 24 hours ago they talked to me today they put out a wall i just want to try to see what's going on I think these people are just probably trying to kill me or something. Like, I don't know. Um, they won't leave me alone. They are literally harassing me. Like, literally, they will not leave me alone. They're at my door again. And it is now like 3 o'clock a.m. And it won't stop. It just will not stop. Like, they begged them to keep me in the hospital and put me in the ward and bagged them and bagged them, please, 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 don't let her leave, like, I think these people are really after me, for real, like, yeah, they've been after me on the work uh, standpoint, but I think these people was really after me, for real, like, I can't stop looking over my shoulder, y'all, oh my gosh, they're outside of my fucking door. It's 328, and they sent the police back to my space they begged the fucking hospital people to keep me they were upset because the hospital said no she's fine released me and they wanted me to go with them the hospital said no she's released once y'all are here to verify that she is released she can leave here they are three in the morning because my commands want them for to meet me for whatever reason yeah, I ain't crazy. I know what I'm talking about. Hey, everybody. Um, I just want to say thank you for all of the support and all of the love. I mean, it's, it's mind blowing. Um, and it just feels good because so long I felt like I was by myself. I don't have any family here in Texas. Um, I'm on this base by myself, and if you know me, you know I don't have a lot of friends. Um, and so, thank you for all of the support. I just want to update y'all on everything today. Um, as, an, as a part of the effort to shut me up about everything, um, they decided to kick me out in the next 10 days, um, which is very unfair and unjust that I've done nothing wrong but try to spread the try to spread the word that this base is corrupt and it's a lot of things going on but in efforts to hush me yeah so I'm being separated from the army under misconduct after I've served for five years 
never been in trouble. Um, I love that anybody who knew me know I talk about the army nonstop. Um, despite of not posting it on my social media, but they knew, you know, people would walk around, oh, sorry, Major Scott, you know, they know I loved it. And I was so proud of it for so long. And the moment that you highlight issues that need to be addressed, you know, they kicked me out. I got 10 days to try to figure out where I'm gonna live, 10 days to figure out a plan, 10 days to figure out where my next source of income is gonna come from, 10 days with nothing, nothing to justify it. So I'm gonna make a video and I'm not gonna, st I've been assaulted, I have been threatened, um, I have been, I mean, in so many different situations that you guys are not aware of. And for so long, I was so scared. And people would say, go to the news. Your, your story is mind-boggling. Like, I can't believe you've been through this. You know, you're so strong because you don't talk about it. But I feel like I wasn't strong then. I couldn't talk about it. And I just think about the people that I kind of influenced to join. Like, I always think about my little sister, you know, who I told her it was the best thing in half the days. I didn't even think I could be there for myself. I, I, I couldn't. It, I, I will explain everything today. So I just hope that you guys can stay around. Repos, please. I really need the help. I appreciate the support. And it's wrong. They're kicking me out. It is absolutely insane. Um, yeah. So ten days. They're off the hook. That's what they want from me to not continue to go and, and fight for these things. And now they're off the hook, you know? So. It's just been a lot. So I really appreciate all of the support and everything else, you know? So I'll update you guys later. So pretty much. I've called these people here, um, Martinez and and what I don't even send Sarah Sandler. Sandler here because I have been harassed non fucking stop, and I wrote a, I'm the one who called the police, wrote my sworn statement, and because my going they're literally walking into the buildings behind me as if i did something wrong or if i got some type of order. i wasn't supposed to i wasn't oh no i had lied about the stuff i put on my sworn statement because the other uh, they said they said that's not true and that's not what happened so we're gonna we're gonna arrest you okay that that look what happens when you report sexual harassment in fort hood you get bullied you get hazed, you get harassed, you turn up dead. Attorney Natalie Quam revealed details into how Sergeant Fernandez was found 30 miles from post in Temple. They told us that they found Elder hanging from a tree near a railroad. She says Fernandez was found with his military ID, a backpack, a cell phone, car keys, and $900 on him. It's very suspicious. Someone's gonna kill themselves with all that stuff, no suicide note. Just, it's questionable. Let's put it that way. And I don't put anything past anyone anymore. Kwam also represents the family of Vanessa Guillen, who joined her in this press conference. People are asking, why didn't Vanessa report the sexual harassment? Why didn't she? Fernandez is an example. He's an example that if you, if you speak up, if you report it, look what happens to you. We were, tr we were truly help hoping for a different result and reuniting Sergeant Fernandez with his family and the teammates that, look, that miss him dearly. In Colleen, Fort Hood officials gathered to address Fernandez. We are deeply saddened to be here today. In the media briefing, officials addressed the sexual assault report that Sergeant Fernandez made. Uh, I can tell you that Sergeant Fernandez did report that he was sexually assaulted when somebody allegedly grabbed his buttocks, and we found the witnesses that could corroborate for Sergeant Fernandez's allegations. There was a thorough legal review and the allegations were unsubstantiated. His supervisors confirming they did notice a change in Sergeant Fernandez's behavior and tried to address it. I can tell you uh, from 
about mid-March, we noticed a change in his behavior. Um, and uh, the change in behavior uh, preceded the unwanted, unwanted touching. It preceded uh, some of the other indicators that we, we saw. Um, and, and what I'll tell you is the chain of command uh, was very much invested in this trooper. Vanessa Guillen's family speaking out, saying Fort Hood needs to be investigated. I'm sick and tired of this happening over and over again. Just knowing that this happened to Vanessa, I thought this was going to stop. It didn't. More deaths are coming out. Eight of the nine soldiers killed Thursday in a training accident at Fort Hood have been identified. They were killed when a flash flood overtook their vehicle and knocked them into the rushing waters. David Begno is at Fort Hood in Texas. David, what can you tell us about the identities of these eight soldiers? Well, Elaine, we know the names and we have the pictures of the eight. There is one soldier whose family has not been notified, and so the Army has not released that name. We will go one by one out of respect for those soldiers, starting with Specialist Christine Faith Armstrong. She was 27 years old from 29 Palms, California. Private First Class Brandon Austin Banner, 22 of Milton, Florida. Staff Sergeant Miguel Angel Colon Vasquez, 38 of Brooklyn, New York. and friends concerned about their loved one who's been missing for more than a week. After nearly two months, still not one sign of missing soldier Vanessa Guillen. CID is also looking for private second class Gregory Morales. Fort Hood officials say he was placed on AWOL status on August 20th, but that status has since been upgraded to desertion. Their families on the front lines fighting for the truth. Well, I feel, feel he was failed in every way. The Army has now confirmed the identity of human remains found in a shallow grave. How could this happen on military base? How could this happen while she was on duty? Pressure on post mounts day by day, minute by minute. The unfolding scandal grabbing attention coast to coast. Her death igniting protests and demand for justice. 25 News was there every step of the way. And tonight, this is what we found. They had to have known that this was an issue. It's been a nightmare for Kim Weedle. You're more than familiar with the tragic story of Vanessa Gann, which gripped the nation over the last eight months. But another family's heartbreak began playing out almost a year earlier in 2019. Gregory Weedle Morales was just days away from leaving the Army when he suddenly vanished. The questions have only grown since then. Answers are hard to come by when your 23-year-old adventurous son somehow, someway, ends up in a shallow grave for more than nine months. Might have been able to get all of my son back instead of just the parts they found. <sighs> Kim Weedle is desperate to know the why, to learn how Gregory, a fun-loving private stationed at Fort Hood, since 2015, could suddenly vanish in August of 2019. And these are all things I'm finding out a year and a year and a half later of all this stuff that didn't, didn't get done in time because they wouldn't listen to me when I said he's not AWOL. Before Vanessa's case, before we knew about so many other soldiers on Fort Hood dying from suicide, homicide, or experiencing horrific assaults, there was Greg, a young man, Army Brass, insisted, just left. Well, before, I didn't necessarily blame the Army for his disappearance. I blamed them for not looking. Now, I blame the Army. <laughs> they had to have known that this was an issue. His mom says new findings from a civilian review report, which details just how ill-prepared Fort Hood was to solve crimes like a disappearance or a murder is evidence enough that change is overdue. They didn't look for him. They didn't care about looking for him. He was not a priority to them. As it would appear that suicide, rape, and assault is not a priority down there. She is hopeful that's no longer the case. And even though her son's case and Vanessa's case are very different, Kim also feels a very strong connection. It, it well, more than 10 months after Gregory went missing, his remains were found in a shallow ditch in the exact spot where his abandoned car had been located just months before. It was only by coincidence that his remains were found 
not because the army was looking for him, but in fact, because they were searching for another soldier, the one who gained national attention, Vanessa Guillen. We were being told, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time, that's the army. And the thing about it is we were not setting out to make anybody mad. We wanted to find Vanessa. It was April 22nd at Fort Hood, the last time family heard from Vanessa Guillen and the last place she was seen alive. That's when her family reported her missing, sparking the beginning of their journey for answers. How could this happen on military base? How could this happen while she was on duty? The Army Criminal Investigation Department says Guillen had been in the armory room that day where she was called into work, but the only clues left behind were her keys, work badge, and wallet. I said every time that we reached out to Fort Hood. Many questions surround the soldier accused of killing Vanessa Guillen. As investigators closed in on specialist Aaron Robinson, he fled off post and killed himself. What many want to know, who is Aaron Robinson and what would motivate him to murder? Robinson. The community is mourning the loss of specialist Vanessa. Hundreds of people are out here outside the Fort Hood gates. Seminal profilers say the crime itself gives several clues. He's stealthful. He's engaged in behavior to keep from being identified or arrested. He's engaged in this body disposal behavior because he does not want Vanessa's remains to be found, at least in my opinion. That's very high risk behavior. 25 News investigators found no criminal record. But in this never before aired video of Robinson, that's him, number 64 on the sidelines, we know he played football in high school at Thornton Fractional North High School in Calumet City, Illinois. Not a standout, no newspaper articles or social media posts about him. And in this video, not participating or engaged what one former FBI profiler calls antisocial behavior with no display of empathy toward others. That really goes to the personality of that offender. Robinson has taken this young woman's life and now most people would be in such an emotional state if they had done that, but not in this case. He's now able to start thinking strategically. What do I do with the body? That's not typical. He enlisted in the Army in October 2017 and was a combat engineer. The 20-year-old deployed to Iraq in 2018 for seven months. He lived off post with his girlfriend, Cecily Aguilar, who spent time in the foster care system, according to friends, and was going through trouble in her marriage to another soldier. Cecily Aguilar did tell us that Specialist Robinson told her that he killed Vanessa because she saw a picture on his cell phone of her, and he feared that she would go to the chain of command and get him in trouble for having an affair. There was no romantic relationship between Guillen and Robinson. Family members say Robinson sexually harassed Guillen, an unreported incident, and as we learned, part of a much larger problem on post. Now, Cecily Aguilar was originally supposed to appear in court back in September but because of the coronavirus pandemic, that hearing has been pushed back multiple times. She's now set to stand before a judge on January 5th for a rearrangement, but her trial in federal court is slated for January 21st. Following the deaths of Gregory, Vanessa, and others, and after so many instances of sexual harassment and assault began to surface, an independent civilian review was announced for Fort Hood. Released earlier this month, it shows in stark detail that problems have been building there at post for years. The tragic death of Vanessa Guillen and a rash of other challenges at Fort Hood forced us to take a critical look at our systems, our policies, and ourselves. The U.S. Secretary of Army appointed a Fort Hood Independent Review Committee and were asked to conduct a comprehensive assessment of the Fort Hood command climate and culture and its impact, if any, on the safety, welfare, and readiness of our soldiers and units. 
after 103 days surveying 31,612 soldiers and interviewing 647 more, nine findings were put in the report. Some included the SHARP program to be ineffective. Reports of sexual assault and sexual harassment at Fort Hood are significantly underreported, and there were no established procedures for first-line supervisors in failure to report situations that needed critical action in the first 24 hours. But we're going to fix these issues and change the culture that allowed them to happen. The findings laid out a trend of violent sex crimes that were notably higher in comparison with any other Army installation. Based on a five-year average rate per 100,000, Fort Hood's rates of violent sex crimes came in at 30.6% higher than the U.S. Army Forces Command and 43.2% higher than the Army. First term enlisted soldiers at Fort Hood also had the highest sex offense rates. Carrie F. Ricci, an FHIRC member, listened to many soldiers' stories that had gone unnoticed and unreported. We heard you and we believe you. The fear of retaliation and being ignored hung heavy on the heads of many soldiers, and there was a worry if issues were brought up. It was a little bit cathartic for many of them because someone was listening and they felt that they were being heard. Ryan McCarthy recently signed a new missing soldier policy as defined in the report. There were no established procedures for first-line supervisors when soldiers fail to report or check in. And that requires immediate action within the first 24 hours. It clarifies expectations and responsibilities of unit commanders and law enforcement authorities, focusing on the first 48 hours a soldier is missing. The Fort Hood Independent Review Committee found that in cases handled in coordination with local law enforcement, there were often insufficient information to make a determination. In one case, a soldier was reported AWOL and declared a deserter a month later. A few weeks after, the soldier was found dead at his residence. Not to mention the unsolved murder of soldier Gregory Morales, who disappeared in August 2019 and was also declared AWOL. Why wasn't any of this stuff done so that we would have had answers a year and a half ago? instead of, you know, still now just finding out things. McCarthy explained that new procedures to fix these findings will be in effect by March 2021. And as both he and General McConville say, change starts with leadership. I want to make sure that we have a environment where everyone is treated with dignity and respect and everyone takes care of each other. And we expect our leaders to do that. And that's what we're going to do. Private Major Morta is under investigation after he was found unresponsive near Stillhouse Hollow Lake. He goes off base, goes missing, and come, uh, is found dead. Officials say the 26-year-old was found in the vicinity of the lake on Friday. Hunter Prophet served with Morta at Fort Hood Benning, Georgia. He remembers his battle buddy as a terrific soldier. Extremely close. We hung out, did a lot of things, and then... I see this thing come up last night from a lot of my battle buddies. They're like, Morta never did anything to anybody. He just really kept to himself, and that's what really made me mad about it. Morta entered the Army less than a year ago in September 2019 as a Bradley fighting vehicle mechanic. It's just heartbreaking and devastating to hear that another soldier is you know, not only missing, but now is now gone. Morta's death comes after Specialist Vanessa Gein's remains were found near the Leon River on June 30th, and Private Gregory Riedel Morales's remains were found in a Killeen field on June 19th. Ten months after he went missing, Gregory's mother, Kim Weedel, says his body will be flown home Thursday. I feel for his family so very much. I mean, it's been a month, and we're just now getting Gregory back to, the, to Oklahoma. I hope they get answers faster. The cause of Morta's death has yet to be confirmed. The incident is under investigation by the Bell County Sheriff's Department. They say they are not releasing any other information pending further investigation, and they are still waiting on the preliminary autopsy report from the medical examiner's office. Reporting on Fort Hood, Olivia Laveda, 25 News.